All right, all right. So um, I want to hand it off now to the uh, St. Thomas Aquinas team. Um, I know it's just about time to get started. Thank you guys for being here. And I believe you have uh, presentation control. So whenever you're ready, um, feel free to get started. Can you see my screen? We can. Okay. All right, well, hello, this is St. Thomas Aquinas College presenting our recommended strategy for CoinSource. Our team decided on three objectives, one to analyze the market size for the number of consumers that use Bitcoin, to report on key institutions that have a demand for Bitcoin ATMs, and three, to establish a go-to market strategy. As a team, we first analyzed the market size for the number of consumers that use Bitcoin. Currently, there are 42 million Bitcoin wallets. The average Bitcoin user has several Bitcoin wallets, and they use multiple wallets addressed to increase their financial privacy when transacting in Bitcoin. Therefore, the total number of Bitcoin users must be less than 42 million and only about 5% of Americans hold Bitcoin. As you can see here, this is the installation growth of crypto ATM installed in 2014 to 2020. We see a rise in, of increase in 2018 to 2019, then a spike up in 2020. On March 21st, I mean, on March 1st, 2020, there was 7,022 Bitcoin ATMs installed worldwide by March 21st. Six, the, f the number of ATMs increased from 7,000 to 301. This is a seven. This is a 279 difference in just under four weeks. This is a worldwide statistic of the top 10 crypto ATM operators. The top 10 operators run about 3,282 crypto ATMs, about 45% of the market. And there are 549 other operators who run 4,019 crypto, crypto ATMs, about 55% of the market. As you can see here, CoinSource is the top five of these ATMs. These are the top eight manufacturers for crypto ATM by share, and CoinSource makes up about 5.6% of that share. So next, our team analyzed the key institutions that have a demand for Bitcoin ATMs. So this map shows the global locations of all reachable Bitcoin full nodes over the last 24 hours. A full node is a Bitcoin wallet which relays transactions and stores a complete copy of the Bitcoin blockchain, which it shares and synchronizes with connected peers. The map shows that Bitcoin full nodes are concentrated primarily in the United States and then Europe, with East, East Asia being the next densest region. It's important to note that although this map is from September 16th, uh, 2019, the general idea is the same. In order to grow your company, our team suggests starting first with those locations with high concentrations of Bitcoin full nodes. And then after establishing servers in those areas, we suggest moving to those with lower concentrations of Bitcoin full nodes. And according to coin, the coin dance site, which tracks Bitcoin related metrics, the interests of Bitcoin community members can be tracked from Google analytics data. So this data reveals a user's presence and activity across a range of websites, which then reveals the types of information which interests them. From this graph, we see that people in financial and investment services are those most interested in Bitcoin, followed by software design and banking. By focusing on these target groups, CoinSource has the power to expand into an even larger company. Our team recommends working directly with companies who deal with transactions involving Bitcoin, finance and investment, software development, and banking. The graph shows the Google search frequency for Bitcoin over the past five years. As you can see, searches for Bitcoin have declined 90% since December of 2017. CoinSource needs to emphasize in their marketing strategy that Bitcoin is a long-term financial tool, not an internet phenomenon. Our team recommends CoinSource utilizing the Google Trends data to determine which retailers to target first with their B2B operation. This graph shows data taken over the past, the past five years involving web searches, including the term Bitcoin, hence why it's not capitalized above. California, Washington, and Hawaii are the first states, are the states that have shown the highest search interest in Bitcoin. The data also tells us that the metro areas with the most interest in Bitcoin are the San Francisco, San Francisco, Oakland, California area, Glendive, Montana, and Las Vegas, Nevada. It would be advantageous for CoinSource to market to companies with multiple locations within these states. So first, our team recommends that CoinSource work with banks and financial institutions. 
This image shows banks and financial institutions that are currently exploring blockchain opportunities or a list of records called blocks that are linked using cryptography. Both finance and investment employees, as well as banks, can be targeted at physical U.S. bank locations. There are many different types of banks, ranging from small credit unions to large national banks. Depending on the focus of the company, it would be best to research the individual banks to see what their employees do on a daily basis and if Bitcoin ATMs would be helpful. Our team recommends first marketing towards large banks like JP Morgan Chase, as large corporations are more likely to be looking for ways to expand than small credit union style banks. Large corporations typically have a bigger budget, which gives them more leeway to spend and try new things. Next, CoinSource should focus on working with software developers. Our team understands that software development is a broader term. However, a lot of startup development, startup software development companies begin in San Francisco, California. So aiming the marketing focus on that location would be beneficial to break into that specialized market. From there, as the startup companies grow and develop into larger, more diverse companies, CoinSource would grow with them. The startup companies themselves will buy and operate the ATMs and CoinSource will receive a percentage of each transaction. This growth will allow CoinSource to market to even more businesses, greatly increasing profit. Similarly, working with these startups allows for a much larger diversification of businesses as software developers are involved in a multitude of different career fields. Our team advises CoinSource to form partnerships with some non-traditional companies to appeal to the average consumer. In an effort to bridge the gap between the average consumer and Bitcoin, our team designed the CoinSource card. The CoinSource card can be requested through a user's CoinSource account. This is essentially a, pre a reloadable prepaid card that is linked to the individual user's account on the CoinSource smartphone app. Within the app, users can buy or sell Bitcoin. Sales of Bitcoin go through automatically and users can pick up their cash at any CoinSource ATM. Purchases of Bitcoin will be pending until cash is deposited at an ATM or CoinSource affiliated company. We suggest the CoinSource card as we are establishing a B2B network of Bitcoin ATMs within major retailers. Anywhere consumer, consumers can typically get cash back from a debit card, such as supermarkets, pharmacies, and retail stores, consumers will now also be able to conduct Bitcoin transactions. CoinSource users will insource the CoinSource card into a chip reader and enter the verification, show, verification code shown on the app. Then the user can complete the tra their chosen transaction by e either giving the cashier the predetermined cash or receiving cash back from the store. Partnering with major retailers will highlight how liquid Bitcoin truly is. This turns every customer who walks into a Walmart, Dollar General, CVS, etc. into a potential, Bitcoin, uh, potential coin source user. Retail chains have thousands of locations, which is ideal for CoinSource's B2B approach. If CoinSource takes advantage of this untapped market, it has the potential to grow the number of ATMs in service faster than the company has experienced in the past. Lastly, our team decided to establish a go-to market strategy. First, CoinSource should enforce companies to utilize Bitcoin ATMs instead of Bitcoin apps. Because of this, it will be a fast and more efficient form for companies to buy and sell currency. Informing users the pros and cons of owning an ATM and implementing incentives to expand growth. Second, CoinSource should develop various ways for Bitcoin to be advertised would positively impact the company. Nonetheless, in-person trade shows and conferences will allow current customers, potential customers, and big companies to expand the impact of Bitcoin. In-person trade shows will give a customer a live-action tutorial to utilize Bitcoin ATMs and learn the benefits of the ATM services versus the app. Third, updating how the Bitcoin is advertised will increase the amount of professional customers such as businesses. Email advertisements sent through the company emails will enforce a more professional marketing strategy that big companies would see versus advertisements placed on social media platforms. Advertising incentives will give customers the ability to excite and utilize ATMs because they will receive free trials and or discounts on their transactions. This will show how innovative and easy it is to use Bitcoin ATMs instead of the apps. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. This was a really awesome presentation. We appreciate all the hard work. Um, so now we'll open it up to questions from the judges. I've got uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, elaboration a little bit more on uh, software developers 
Are you talking uh, broad-based, uh, regardless of their uh, focus? For example, artificial intelligence versus uh, crypto software developers, uh, or are you being specific as to a segment of the software industry? No, I was going more with the general um, software developers because it's such a broad term that anyone can apply it to their uh, daily life and their, whatever their job focus is. I would have to do more research to see which specific field I would go into. But as of right now, I was just keeping it broad-based. So I, in, in, I, in what yeah. aspect... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I, yeah, I was going to say just the idea behind that is where our main point is how that the average consumer in America is not using Bitcoin, and that's what we really want to target. So having software developers from a general broad background will be able to make this not just a niche market and it'll be more understanding for every customer to use or if someone from a different industry coming like bringing them into coin source within your like developing field could make this experience more comfortable to people who are unknown to this type of industry so uh, let me let me just clarify are you are, are you saying that you want to utilize software developers on a, on a broad scope, high level, um, as influencers and, and marketers? No, not influencer marketers, but just saying like, so it's, I mean, normally when people hear Bitcoin, they're just like, oh, I don't know anything about Bitcoin. I know it was a trend. Um, so this is just something that like when users log on, like developing an app, developing other types of like platforms that, you know what I mean? You can like have you guys have great blogs on your website. But just making that more of like an app experience or like a user friendly experience. So like it's you can just click on and see what were the trends for Bitcoin today. So even people who are a little scared to invest can just start getting experience with it. Okay. So basically, it's under the assumption that people in uh, Silicon Valley are early adopters of technology, so to speak. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Well, well done. Uh, the second question has to do with your coin source card, which I think is an intriguing concept. But the question I have uh, specific to it is the merits of a another physical card in my wallet or a, you know a purse uh, versus a digital uh, card that's on my smartphone. Um, any thoughts on that, one way or the other? Um, yeah, I think that just some. Um companies have this like brought have brought it into the market of like the touch pay and others haven't so it just depends on the store locations um so like i know some like cvs's already have it where you can just tap your phone but some older walmarts you still need to insert your card so it's just the in, the chip reader is the most generic and then you can establish just an app for you and for the older generation too they're not too savvy with using the phones so to have a physical card it might make them feel a little more prepared and better to use it more confident and so how would that be issued i mean uh obviously there's somebody that's manufacturing the coin source would have to partner with but how, how would that be um created and made available to the new uh coin source client so the idea behind that is when you're forming your coin source account like as you take your pictures of your license and stuff you can request a physical card if you feel like that's something that oh a location where it's within a store is closer to me than the actual atm and i'm most likely going to go there you can request and it would one would be mailed to you okay um if i understood your growth plan is mostly focused on going into areas that do not currently have a, a Bitcoin um, ATM. What is your thoughts, or did you put any thought into how to displace the two largest ATM operators now? I would have to do more research on that one. Bell or Taylor, do you guys have any ideas? Well, I mean, I think just the one of the best ways to displace any of your comp um, your competitors is to continuously progress and come up with new ideas like this. And I mean, I haven't seen any sort of Bitcoins advertised with just major retailers yet. And um, I think forming partnerships and good relations with other um, businesses is just an easy, uh, like a, a sure way to grow. 
Yes, can I ask a question uh, reverting back to this, the car and the partnership with the retailers? Can you uh, dive into the business model a little bit more, the incentives for the retailers? What do the financials look like and how, did it, how does the incentive structure break down? Sure. Well, um, all of these retailers automatically get percentages when um, like there are transaction fees involved when you um, use your card at any of those these locations or when you're partnered with Visa, stuff like that. And um, the idea is, is very similar that this would just work within the same percentage that um, CoinSource collects from the transactions. And that would be split within um, within these major like these major retailers. So even though they're taking a percentage of coin sources fee, um, you are exchanging that for thousands and thousands of locations, which would exponentially grow the amount of transactions you complete within a day. So are these are these USD transactions, Bitcoin transactions? What like what um, kind of things are you talking about? These are Bitcoin transactions. So people coming in using Bitcoin to purchase things at CVS? No, we wouldn't have them. We don't want Bitcoin transactions within like products. We think that would be confusing. It's just the same as when you're completing your transaction at a store, like as you would say, get cash back and the cashier would hand you $40. You insert your Bitcoin card, you type in the code, and then the cashier would give you that money. I'm tracking now. Bit of, like a strictly transaction related business. Wow. From, a, from a compliance standpoint, I've got a question on the logistics of that, and, and I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, and uh, uh, explanation on it. So part of the, the necessity of the hardware kiosk itself is the KYC AML aspect, know your customer and anti-money laundering. Um, the reason that uh, there is a one-time enrollment uh, for each and every one of our customers from day one and dollar one, uh, consisting of front of your ID, back of your ID, and a selfie, and that also is matched through facial recognition technology at the kiosk with the camera that's on the kiosk. Um, do you feel as though that there is increased risk to having these transactions done um, counter side uh, with it, with the store clerk and uh, the customer support kind of being on their hands, the education and uh, processes on their hands, uh, as well as protecting the KYC AML aspect. Um, uh, I'd like to know what your guys' thoughts are on the risk assessment of this. So I think with any new, in not invention, but like a new card, there's security risk, as you said. Um, I think having like a two factor authentic authentication so like you have to have the phone you have to have the code that would minimize some of the risk but it doesn't eliminate all of it well i don't know if you were going to say something i cut you off sorry <laughs> no 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 um so what my um the idea behind this was that so many like of these like the transactions like this are already going on and we already have now um, the idea that you would already establish your prior credentials within the um, CoinSource app. So, like, um, whatever just type of, like, regular regulations, I would say, are involved would be, um, like, implemented already because this is sort of like an already established thing with just regular banks and, like, or credit card companies within um, regular, like, um, retail stores. So it's not really like there's that extra level of security within Bitcoin, especially if you're trying to advertise it as something that's liquid and getting everybody to use that, um, like establishing probably like a predetermined security thing, not having to take it to the next level um, would make users feel more comfortable with it. And I guess just piggybacking on, on Derek's, uh, Derek's comment with respect to uh, considering the regulatory risk and legal and compliance picture, did you guys consider that and uh, your recommendations to pursue banking partners and even with the chip reader card? Um, no, I think that's something that we could probably do some more research in. Okay. What about the transaction size? Uh, what's the average transaction size at a Bitcoin ATM and then the crypto economics makes sense for smaller transaction sizes 
you know, for twenty dollars cash back through uh, twenty USD worth worth of Bitcoin at a cashier. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? It was breaking up for me. The average transaction size at a, a, B, a Bitcoin ATM versus a transaction at a cashier is probably going to be pretty significantly different. What are the crypto economics of that? And does it make sense for, um, you know, coin sources revenue model with a smaller transaction size? Is the question um, um, for, uh, for for us, CoinSource, as far as just that data, um, you know, average transaction? Uh, I guess if the, the team doesn't know it, then maybe the, the question is for CoinSource. Okay. Yeah, um, so, I mean... I think I shared with the team. Um, sorry, I'll go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, like, from our research, like, we... I did a lot of like reading about transactions and stuff like that, but I couldn't get more actual numbers. I think that's not something kind of disclosed from some companies. So I was just going to say, I'd like to hear point sources. Yeah, I could definitely speak, you know, as, as, uh, as an operator, um, not no other operators publicly share what their average transaction uh, um, amount is or what their volume is. That's just kind of the nature of the game. Um, for coin source, um, and this is to keep it in mind that everybody is, um, you know, does go through a KYC AML IDB process, which some uh, operators, uh, whether they're operating legally or, or, you know, regulated or not, uh, feel is a barrier to entry. Um, but even with that barrier to entry, uh, in the eyes of those other operators, uh, our average transaction volume is around 450 to $500 uh, per transaction. So each individual transaction customer is averages uh, $500 daily minimums of $5, daily maximums of $5,000. All right, folks, so, so we're, we're just about at time here. Um, so I wanna give the, the chance for the team to, uh, to say thank you and, and to head out, but um, great work, guys. <clears throat> we're extremely proud of you. I think very thorough and uh, unique insights, and I, I can tell already that the, uh, the judges are are digging their heels into uh, what you've proposed, which is great to see. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Great work. All right, good luck.